It's a big day for Meghan and the 14% of the German population without a German passport. The government has finally deigned to give them basic democratic rights. Woohoo! Unfortunately, the fascist fucks who apparently represent the majority of Germans have already decided to repeal it when they get to power next. Ah well, at least you can get a fairly cheap panic room at Lidl now. Hey ho! In Berlin's heart, when news is unveiled, Meghan and Conrad with German I'm Megan, I'm here in Berlin with Conrad Werner. Hello, Conrad. Hello. How are you? Uh, good, yes, very good. Are you warm? Oh, I'm boiling. It's freaking roasting in Berlin today. I know, and it's terrible. I just, as soon as this happens every year, as soon as it gets, it hits 28, 29 degrees, I turn into an, a pensioner. I just, uh-huh. I, 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 I just lie flat. I can't move. It's like having an illness like long covid or something i feel um. really headachey i just hate it and I, it didn't used to happen i just think it might be just getting old and i think it's fine i think today is particularly bad because it's super humid and then we had yeah. the apocalypse in yeah. the middle of the day which was a storm oh my grade eight class after lunch was like master and commander <laughs> The storm was coming down. It was so loud, but I had to, like, the grading deadline was today. Ah. And so these kids had to present so I could grade them. They're just, like, screaming at me over the sound of the storm. We're all screaming feedback. The windows are old, and they start leaking, so there's water coming all over the floor. Two boys who finished their presentations are, like, mopping the decks, literally. <laughs> <laughs> and you were the captain I'm of like, the ship. I'm like, mop quieter! <laughs> it, was, it was chaos. Wow! Yeah. Oh, how exciting! So I think we've we've earned a drink. We've got to okay. The end yeah, of the let's day. have a let's have um, a drink. Again, I I have my eye on some new mega cans that are coming up, everybody. So you can stay tuned. Okay. Okay. But this is just a Lynchburg lemonade because okay. I had to go to your spatie and it was the nicest one they had that was three hundred and thirty. Yeah. And we like a Lynchburg lemonade, don't we? Love it. Yeah. I'm warning you guys. I've had one small bowl of couscous all day and a banana. <laughs> Around this time, I become like a scavenger, surviving only on what I can remember to bring into work on the way, which was the couscous, bought for an exorbitant price in Alexander Platz. And no one brought any chocolates or cakes or anything into the staff room. So, oh, so this is going to be going to go straight to my okay. exhausted brain. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's the ticket. Oh, God, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. So you Oof. can make ice cold as well. well that's very nice. Yeah, that was um, the other reason for going to your spatie because mm-hmm. otherwise it was going to be warm by the time I got here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. We it, we could talk about football. That's news. It's always political, as we discovered on our last <laughs> podcast yeah. with the lovely Kit Holden. Yeah. Quite a divisive episode. Some of our listeners very much enjoyed the football as a break. <laughs> Some were like, what have you done? <laughs> Don't do that. Stop talking about football. But yeah. Germany's well, through, so that's good. Well, luckily, it's we don't know anything about football, so yeah. Though, so you know, it's fine now. I we're, will say, no, no football experts no. to be seen. But you've been watching some football, haven't you? I have. It's yeah. been quite fun and exciting. Yeah. Enjoyed watching Scotland. It was, a, it was a, an interesting match, the first game, <laughs> but we enjoyed it. Standing outside the pub. Oh yeah, singing along. Yeah, they weren't very good, were they? England no. were even worse, and yet they <laughs> got through. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, but, yeah, uh, England are getting an absolute trashing in the in the press, so but, that's uh, always good. Plucky Georgia doing <gasps> very well. I, uh, I can't believe I missed that game last uh, night because I was fucking. That was marking. great. They were so. I mean, it was like it, they it went mental. It was like they were I so would, excited. It yeah. was great, and they were really good as well. They were just good. really good. I also have um, to say that I did not see the turkey going through against Chechia, but that didn't matter because I live in Neukölln and my windows were open. So 
I <laughs> became aware that something was happening. I think at the round the time the red card was given because oh, if, yeah. there was no score. It was just a red card, and that was like, Aah! I was like. Oh, God. And then I'm like, right, I need to check if there's a football game with Turkey involved or I need to leave the apartment because it's re- like something's begun. Some kind of something war has broken out. But no, it was great. Great fun. OK. Yeah. And there's a lot of tooting of horns. Yes. My friend, right our friend evening. Barry, actually, on Sunday lives lives on Sunday. And he was just like, I haven't. It was so hot. And also the horns all night. I couldn't Oh dear! He's not not slept. Yeah. So yeah, football. Football. We can, you know. It's been going right well. Did you hear about the 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 the, uh, the football fans of around the world are getting to know Do- getting to know Deutsche Bahn? Oh God! Have you read about this? God help them! What have they done? <laughs> what? Well, apparently there was this one game. It was one of the England games actually, where they were reduced to walking from the centre of. Gelsenkirchen to the like four miles to the the station. Oh, I did hear that was a disaster. Though I will say, is that Deutsche Bahn or is that just the Bahn in Deutschland? Just to be clear, are we talking who's? God, I'm so German now. I'm like, it's actually not (laughs) Deutsche Bahn. That's going to be under the BVG or whatever the Gelsenkirchen (laughs) BVG is. Well, apparently the some of the uh, rail infrastructure in Germany, I, I can't tell you which level and who is responsible for it, has been exposed as being very poor I know, during this all tournament. These, like, particularly English fans, they come over and they expect all this like mm. German efficiency. We're like, oh no, sorry, that was a lie. That was ages um, ago. The so, economy has gone slightly down, so everything's <laughs> fallen apart. And also fascism back, lads, class. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome in Deutschland. Welcome to Germany. And the footballers of the German footballers also have quite Nazi haircuts. I thought, oh, don't you oh, find? But they, they've they've gone reverted back to 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 having like nineteen thirties haircuts. Don't you? Have I you do know, just like, think that's <laughs> quite just fashions. I'm not sure. Is that? I'm I know. Not I'm sure not they saying they are Nazis. I'm just saying that they look a little bit like extras in Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. I'm saying. But, okay. Uh, well. No. Yeah. So there's that. So, uh, but there's also been kind of interesting news happening today. It's a huge day, if you ask me, for German democracy. It is. It's a big day for me. <laughs> it's a big day for you. Why is it a big day for you? Because, finally, it looks like after living here for God knows how many years, learning bloody Deutsch, having a politics podcast in which I'm admittedly relatively ill-informed but still engaged engaged emotionally involved i will be able to vote because i will be able to become german now yes so this is we're recording this on the 27th of june thursday which is the day is it i thought there was a 26th today no i believe i should worry everybody (laughs) fucking hell pretty sure it's the 27th so yeah so there's the, the the citizenship reforms of the current government have come into effect today they were passed a few months ago and they are some quite basic reforms so i'll i'll run through them quickly multiple nationalities are now allowed yeah in principle so you if you have a nationality of another country you can you can become german you don't have to give up your country up until now it has been only for eu countries and switzerland that were allowed that and another Um, couple of exceptions which is north korea and iran i think are on the list yeah because those countries don't allow you to give up your citizenship that's why that oh really yeah so the law was so they made exceptions for countries where you because they were bad on the bad list and they were worried about what people would happen but they don't give a fucking shit do they so i don't know why i thought that so it was like yeah so they made exceptions for countries that were that wouldn't allow you to give your citizenship Mm -hmm. so they said okay fine but now it's a basic principle that you can is uh, you can um become german you can become naturalized they've accelerated the the procedure so you don't have to wait eight years Up, up until now you had to be living here for eight years now it's five years to start applying also and it's three years if you can show what the the german interior ministry calls special achievements in integration so that would be apart from learning german if that would be excellence at school or in professional life or engaging in civic life like volunteering that kind of thing um, like this podcast yes like (laughs) that should count have you called (laughs) most prolific German politicians a cunt 
<laughs> at some point or other. That yeah. would be nice. So That's cool. I did you... actually want to, because I do think, as you say, this is a historic day for Germany. It's not just all about me. It's actually more about like enfranchising more people so that we can maybe have the Germany that we like, the modern multicultural Germany, which might actually be possible. Yeah. I if mean, we it's... stop what's happening. So, I mean, a lot of this stuff is like just really basic things that should have happened decades ago. Um... Sorry, you were in the middle of a list. I got. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I think the biggest change is actually the is citizenship for children. So, this principle if you're born here, you can become German uh -huh. straight away. And up until now, that you weren't allowed to be German if What? you were born here. You had to, yeah. I mean, this is the thing. I got a, a tweet today, actually, because I posted this on Twitter. And I got a tweet today from someone who is used to be a teacher, and he said he was he used to, he taught high school in Germany for yeah. three years, and he was appalled to discover that more than half of the of his class yeah. were not citizens of the country, even though they'd not been to any other country in their lives. Yeah. And then again, I mean... they're just like, why don't people <laughs> integrate? It was like, well, you won't let them. They don't live anywhere else. Like they, they already no, live here. No, it's crazy. I've had that in in schools and stuff as well. But I um, mean, that's really quite shocking. And that is like, I mean, that, that's what we're talking about here. That is, I think, the most important thing is like actually including people who were born here in the country that they live in. I mean, that's like a, a basic thing for any democracy. I think. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. Um, so there's that, and what else? Uh, oh yeah, this is quite interesting. Uh, special recognition for the guest worker generation. Oh, so that okay, is, this um, is interesting. So Turkish people, usually Turkish people who came here, also Italians in the 1960s. And Vietnamese, maybe? Yeah, that was more in East Germany, but them too. Okay, yes. okay. So more, uh, yeah. Um, so those, the people that were kind of brought over here or came over here as part of this generation where Germany really needed to build up its economy. The Wirtschaftswunder. The, yeah, they were called guest workers and they didn't have any rights when they got here. <laughs> because they were like told a guest to... <laughs> but like in the way that you're a guest <laughs> yeah. in a yeah. sort of so, you know, penal colony <laughs> so those people people from that generation both in east and west germany don't have to take any naturalization tests anymore at all they yeah. just have to have basic language skills all the language skills and then and so that is probably going to change well, quite what a lot. is the language skills do you know is it b1 no all i know is it's All only. I mean, all language skills. I so think I it's. Know. I think it's B1. Yeah, oh, that's what it was before. So that is probably going to make quite a bit of a difference. A lot of people are expected to, because there are like still a lot of people in Germany of Turkish descent who are who yeah, will and apply. Yeah, fucking rebuild this fucking country. Yeah. I mean, it's like, like it's like yeah, you just you just, you just wonder that like, it's. Uh, having, yeah. I don't know if you're like German is that good. It was like, well, what the fuck, like. So yeah, I mean, you just like you read some of this these reforms that are brought in, you're just like uh, appalled yeah. that this hasn't happened already, like decades ago. I, I, I think. Yeah. Oh, you do still have to prove that you can earn your own living. That haven't, they haven't changed that, but that also doesn't apply to people from the guest worker generation. Good. Uh, That's a weird thing for citizenship. Usually, I mean, I know in the UK that that is a condition of residency, getting residency, but once you're eligible for citizenship, that that's not... Yeah. Your financial status isn't really a thing because it's like, oh, well, you're a citizen, now you're our responsibility. Yeah. And now is... And also you have to, like, now, now then... So there is a, okay. a fly in this ointment. So what they've also done <laughs> is slightly change the uh, requirements for what you have to commit to as a, to the democratic yeah. order. So you have to you have to like you have to commit to the German constitution, which is like quite normal. But they also said like they specifically said you have to commit to protecting Jewish life in the country. And this that's is fine. That's fine, but <laughs> that's what it says on the Interior Ministry website. But uh, the Financial Times had an, ar an article today which said that I don't know. I haven't confirmed this, but they said that they, there was a. They asked whether that includes recognizing Israel's right to exist, right? As whether that would be an requirement. You have to declare <laughs> that you have that you recognize Israel's right to exist. And apparently, they did confirm to the that, that this was going to be part of the naturalization test. And apparently, they did confirm that. 
uh, to the Financial Times, but I haven't heard that myself, and it doesn't. It's not really clear what is going to be on. That was a interest. sort of rumor that was going around, and I think some Bundesländer were looking at bringing it in. But yeah, I, I mean, that's just such a stupid dog. Like in what? Oh, there's so much to unpack in there. Like obviously, I like Israel exists. It's a thing. It has been. It's a thing. But does that mean like? in the way that they're interpreting it now where any criticism of Israel is viewed as yeah I mean that's the thing it's like all a bit unclear what all this means and uh, whether you can then have your citizenship revoked if you deny like what you know what what does that mean like if you criticize Israel and then you get called (laughs) as happens so alarmingly in this country where it's like oh well that's you don't want Israel to exist. I was like, that's no, no, that's not what I said. I'd quite like them to stop doing what they're doing in Gaza. So, but yeah. So I don't know quite, <laughs> I don't really know what quite what that means either. And, and what, because it's not actually what it says officially mm. on the Interior Ministry website. It's just something okay. that has been, that one of the, some journalists has well, um, followed up on. Anyway. We um, can do, we, you can follow along everyone. And I do, I, I would, I wanted to have some information about how people can like apply and stuff because I do think it's really important. This probably applies to quite a few people maybe listening to the podcast and I do like the more people we can get able to vote. Yeah, I mean... Particularly in places like Berlin where we have a conservative government when we have a, a, a fifth to a quarter of the population unable to vote who are here paying our high taxes, which is fine. I'm all about that. But... Yeah, some representation would be nice. We can have a Berlin mega can party. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even across the whole of Germany, fourteen percent of people living in Germany don't have. Germany that's too. what the AFD are probably going to get fourteen <laughs> percent, so, or that's. Um, and then, and apparently, Germany has had a lower rate of naturalizations than other European countries in the last few years. Yeah, it just, so it's, isn't that, it's difficult and unwelcoming. Uh, uh, so. I think I just think these reforms, as they are, are pretty mild and things that should have happened decades ago. And yeah. and so which makes it me even more angry than I normally am, because you know me, obviously I'm a very angry person. You're not a very angry person. That's why you have me. You're sort of... Yeah. With the CDU, because the CDU uh... have already said that they were going to repeal this oh, reform. Go fuck yourselves. And I just think that... I. It, if the CDU wants to be considered like a party of, of you know, of government, if wants to be considered a party that represents the people of Germany and, it, and is going to be sh- prove that it is, I don't know, competent to govern the country, it has to stop saying racist stuff. And it is not stopping doing it because it is just... But it's, <laughs> it's, it's, and, uh, it is both on the one hand, I think, people who just don't think, what... It's like, exactly as you say, when you actually look through that and you talk about that with someone from another European country or like some other normal country, like even the fucking UK, it's more expensive and so it's ridiculous, but they've got like more reasonable stuff around this. And you go, what do you mean Germany won't let you be like fucking Canadian and German at the same time? Yeah. What the fuck? I know. Or the, all those people you brought in. Or if you're fucking born there, you have to... This is insane. I So I've got a quote here from Carsten Linnemann, who's the general secretary of the CDU, who says that he's against expressly against the express naturalization, in quote marks, of, of three years is not the right right way to go and sends out completely completely the wrong signals. Germany already has one of the most liberal citizenship laws in the world, says Linnemann. Naturalization should come at the end of a successful integration, not at the beginning. Oh, it's all this fucking dog whistle integration, integration. It just means, like, he's not talking about me there. No, it and just anyway, means the three poor years is for experts. brown I mean, people. Yeah. And you can go fuck yourselves. Like, honestly, I, it's so disgusting. And it's also so fucking cynical as well, because of course the CDU are shitting themselves, because none of those, or very few of those 14% are going to vote. Christian fucking Democrats because you're racist twats. Hmm. So maybe you could maybe be a little less racist and go after, like, I'm sure a lot of those 14% are conservative thinkers, might be religious. You have that in common, but you actually are going to put your racism 
and your uncomfortable like discomfort with basically Islam ahead of actually being smart about this. Yeah, I know. I mean, I think like, it's quite shocking. It's, and, uh, it's appalling that they said that. That's like AFD shit. And then we're supposed to believe that they're not going to fucking collaborate with them. When everything you go like, oh, are you going to be a bit racist or are you going to be more progressive? And they go, ah, oh, sorry. I know. I mean, it is awful because, I, I mean, I just, I just don't understand it because I've been to, you know, I went to a CDU party conference. You did. And I remember you telling me like the merch that you got. And it was the best <laughs> thing I've ever heard. You got glasses, like one of those little glasses cleaners. Yeah. For example. Yeah, for example and everyone and, had a side parting yeah they did but they were like you know like i was talking to a lot of the people you know around not the politicians but like the people the members and the people who were milling around and they were like you could have a conversation with them you know yeah. they weren't like crazy swivel-eyed yeah, not... nazis as you would <laughs> expect and it just really like it, it just and i just think that is that's what the cdu should be i mean obviously i don't you know this isn't this this stuff with the reforms there's nothing to do with you know taxes oh they think you know they should yeah. have lower taxes this is like uh, you know or, or or benefits they should you know cut benefits or whatever this is just like basic democratic right yeah that everyone should have and they won't they won't do it because again <laughs> i really do think they're they they just will not come to terms with their deep islamophobia racism which has been allowed to be normalized in this country. And we talk about integration and we talk about fucking German values not being compatible with everything. And that I think just, it seems to run deeper there. And like all the while we have this huge threat from the right mm. and they don't give, a, like they don't see the connection no, and between also, those two things. Like, uh, yeah, and also like, yeah. And it's like, I love just it when you're fired up. I'm already <laughs> drunk, by the way, everybody. So, Woo! And these people are, just, and we're talking about people like those teenagers who were born here and don't have German citizenship. That's who we're talking about. And that, those are the, those are, that it is very important for the life of, an, of a democracy that those people feel like they, they, they belong to it. And that's, the, not, I mean, I just think that's really, I just think it's really important. I think. It's going like, to backfire. Like, what do they mean at the end of a long integration? You are actually talking about... Yeah. Or they're saying, like, they don't want the three-year one, but, like, the three-year one is for, like, super mega rich people who they love, presumably. You're showing no, excellence and whatever, which will be something... Yeah, it's for people who make an effort. Like, there's, that's what the idea is. Like, you, you do learn, Like, you already have, you know, German <laughs> in three years or whatever. Like, fine. But they know that that three-year thing will be... Are they saying they're going to reverse the whole thing or just the express thing? Well, no, they would like they would reverse the whole thing. I think they would just scrap it and start again, probably, and then probably not do it at all. I, I, they have, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> but they, I mean, they don't. They never say anything very clearly. Anyway, I mean, it's like they, they, no, they just I don't said think they know what it. they stand for anymore. They and just this said is, they're against it. This is know. the problem. I do think that they, like, what are the CDU good for in times of crisis? Because their values are outdated. Their response to, I mean, I was th seeing today, like yesterday, maybe that Kai Vigna was saying like, oh, we might have to look at the debt break and stuff like that. Yeah. But if you're not going to be like fiscally conservative mm. and stand like stand for a sort of democracy and stability, they don't really have much to offer like in, I don't know. And they don't want to be too racist because that wasn't working for them because now everyone's like looking at the AFD and they're getting such bad international press. Even fucking Le Pen won't work with them. Oh, yeah. I mean, and yeah, yeah. it's, it yeah. I don't know. I think they're just scrambling for anything. And like, I don't know, lads, maybe look at the fucking Christian in your thing. You think Jesus is going to be fucking sending people go f like, fuck off. I hate it. I hate. Oh, I'm so angry. I hate it. It's all this like Christian values that were rammed on my throat the whole time I was growing up. You've got the fucking DUP in Northern Ireland. You've got them over here. And no one actually appears to have read the fucking Bible unless you just read the Old Testament and go on and go with that, which is mental. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Anyway, the other thing <laughs> that really annoys me this week, <laughs> another thing that's not oh, the Oh no, I've forgotten because I'm drunk and I've looked at the list of what's coming up. Okay. 
So not the CDU this time. It was actually the CSU, the Bavarian oh, yes. version. Yes. This is we're talking. I remember who you were talking about before, Alexander Dobrindt. Yes, sorry, I got it wrong. I said CDU, but yes. So Alexander Dobrindt is the parliamentary leader of the Christian Social Union. So that's the parliament of the Bundestag, not the Bavarian parliament. And he said last week that <laughs> if Ukrainians, he said, like, you, if Ukrainians can't get a job in Germany, we should send them back. He said to return, that we should return them to safe areas of Western Ukraine. Yeah, okay. Uh, so where to start? Where to start with it? So this, we should start. Okay. It's probably say that of all the different refugees, Ukrainians get, Ukrainians get the best deal, which some people, which is obviously problematic in itself. Racist. But but they, that's it, that that doesn't. It's not the Ukrainians that need no. to be. It's we need to look at everything else. Okay. Yes. So, so what happens is, if you're a Ukrainian and uh, you come here, you are you you automatically get refugee status and that means that you don't you don't have to go you're not an asylum seeker you don't have to go okay. through the asylum application process and it that means that you automatically have access to to Bürgergeld, citizens income it's like the unemployment benefit of germany and and that has proved to be very helpful for a lot of ukrainians <laughs> yeah because it means giving not, traumatized people who are fleeing a war zone yeah some money is probably quite a nice thing to do. Yeah, because you don't, because you, because you actually get that means also you get access to the job center and they help you to find a job in yeah. whatever you want to do. And a lot of Ukrainians, are st Ukrainians are starting to get apparently more in other European countries. So this is actually a European wide thing. This is an EU law, not law, but this is the the EU has agreed that Ukrainians have this status now, and and and. And apparently in other European countries, it's been going better, like more Ukrainians have got jobs. It's because German is incomprehensible <laughs> yeah. and fucking horrible. So for some reason, the CSU and the CDU and in, in parts of the FDP, in fact, have, oh, have started off. saying that we, should, bags. we shouldn't stop giving the <sighs> Ukrainians the unemployment benefit we should make them into asylum seekers like everyone else they should we should they, they they should they should come here and then they would apply for asylum but that would be a disaster because the aim of this because this is always the aim of this is to say that oh this is a this is a theory that has been debunked many times but that people who are on benefits don't work right and there's like I can't, I can't I can't are we still <laughs> yeah. talking of course we are we're still talking on this level so that's what the FDP have been. So FDP General Secretary Bijan Dujia Sarai has also said that the 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 the, the, the Ukrainians should uh, they they just get a cushy deal because they're on citizens' income and they don't they don't find a job because of that. <laughs> anyway, that has been often like it's that I don't know where to start because uh, that has often been said about people who live on benefits and uh, it's not true it's been often proven to be not true but it, yeah it is still keeps coming up and we're not even talking about that many people nope and uh, German economists but you don't have to take my word for it oh <laughs> you can you can listen to German economist Marcel Fratscher do you know about Marcel Fratscher I don't. Oh, he's great. He's, 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 pretty, he's the president of the German Institute for Economic Research. Ooh. And that he's, sounds like someone who knows what they're talking about. <laughs> so just he me. said, uh, no one will be better off. No one will have a single euro more yep. if Germany treats refugees worse and cuts their benefits. Yep. Anyway, FDP, CDU, CSU have all ignored that and like, said... But we're losing voters <laughs> yeah. and to the racists so we want to show that we have absolutely no fucking moral fiber i mean fine for the fdp like what do they even believe in like fucking cars fine but again the christian democratic union and the christian what does the s stand for social union ha! <laughs> ha! oh god you fucking charlatans oh god yeah fine so. And this is the thing, immigration has absolutely, like, this has been disproven time and time and time again that it's some kind of huge drain on resources. Mm. And it's not. No, I mean, no. Particularly not if you fucking let people work and, like, get into society. No. So we're talking, so 
In March 2024, according to the Federal Employment Agency, around 700,000 Ukrainians were receiving this job seekers benefit. Mm -hmm. That includes 200,000 children. So since we were against child labor, they don't really count. <laughs> so it's half a million. <laughs> yes, which is... half a million. And uh, yeah, and another 185,000 Ukrainians are employed and paying social security contributions already. And I actually met one of those who was a, a music producer and he said mm -hmm. he was on benefits for a year and now he's working and paying taxes as a music producer Good anyway and yeah so I, I i don't know even what they want us to do with this debate send them it, it's just gross it's just all this far right is this just what we're gonna have to talk about even more now like mm. i cannot believe it's depressing the one thing that was kind of keeping me sane with German politics is like, well, at least it's still on some kind of like relatively reasonable level. And we're not talking about fucking processing people through a third country that is going to basically be like a huge, horrendous refugee camp with in a in a country with a horrific human rights record. And apparently now we are going to talk about that in Germany. Yeah, that like is now Schultz is not the, so, the, 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 yeah, we haven't. We could get into that. It's going, that would take a while, though. The, the third country thing. Yeah. This is like because Italy has this deal with Albania now. Oh, great. And mm. I think that is definitely on the. And even though, and obviously the UK has the Rwanda scheme, which hasn't actually started yet, or but just costs. No. The thing about these things is it just costs so much money. I know Germany is actually in talks. But it hasn't admitted it to it yet, but it, people know that Germany is in talks with Uzbekistan and oh, other countries afraid. countries that are border Afghanistan because they don't want to send people back to Afghanistan because it's not safe. So they've been talking about... And that it just means paying them loads of money. It just costs so much money because those countries are just like, sure, we'll take them. And like, how much you how much you got? Why? <laughs> I know. Is it just to appeal to voters? Is it just because... Are they just... What is going on? Yeah. Like, I just, I literally, I would like someone just to explain to me, because from what I understand, it's like Olaf Scholz is under pressure from the Bundesländer because they're like, we have to take too many refugees. It's so hard being a really rich country that has loads of stuff and we have to share it with other people. Ah! <laughs> and now he's like, oh, fine, yeah, let's let's do it. What is anyone, I, I just, I can't. I cannot understand how we can just talk about like people and their lives in this way. And I'm not saying that obviously opening the borders and having a free for all, I'm not sure that would be a great idea either, but there is a level at which we should be able to talk about human beings in 2024. And we just don't seem to be able to consistently manage to do it. It's, it's so disgusting. And this is also like climate refugees. This is stuff that we have caused in the developed world. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, you can't even it's, give it's, like it's, fucking grandmothers here some citizenship when they've been here, working and raising families, and uh, we can't even make any of those people a part of our society without a stupid racist debate, where we talk about how they might be a threat to democracy when all of these fucking white fucks keep killing the Turkish and Arab community, literally murdering them in the streets and in bars and shit, and the fucking far right is on the march again. We can't do any, we can't figure out any of this shit. Yeah. How? What? I know, yeah, I know. I, it's really worrying, I think, because yeah, you know, the rest of, like we've seen in France, and I think, yeah, it's, the, it's, it's the scary times, I, I think, for Europe in general. Anyway. Brilliant. Do you want the fun story at the end? I do. <laughs> it's not actually that. No, I don't. I've just looked at it. It's not fun. It's, World it's exactly <laughs> the worst possible case scenario from what we've just discussed. Bloody hell. Sorry, that I was really trying not to. I was so loud on the last recording. I was trying not to try. I'm so sorry. I'm going to go back to speaking very quietly. I am absolutely <laughs> drunk as a skunk. I was. How is your delicious Lynchburg lemonade? Lovely. I can't, so can't get enough of it. Although I probably should get enough of it. Because Jack Daniels it's Tennessee quite whiskey triple sec liqueur. Oh wow, it's got triple sec in it as well, and mm. lemonade. It's has it. It apparently does. 
Blimey. Yeah, it's absolutely delicious. Right. Right. So at the Interior Ministry Minister's Conference last week, the Federal Interior Ministry, this is a, a conference where the Federal Interior Ministry has a meeting with all the interior ministers of all the different states. So this is Nancy Faser, is that correct? Nancy Faser. And all her minions, not minions, sorry, sorry, that would be... <laughs> No. Very offensive. Her counterparts. <laughs> Their counterparts the in the States. States. Okay. And uh, Who was our Berlin State Minister for the Interior? It used to be someone called Andreas something, but now it's probably not. I don't know. You've stumped oh. me. Sorry. <laughs> you threw that one. That continue. was a curveball. Continue, continue, continue. You're doing really well on all the stats and quotes and economists. Well, I had a little bit of time to prepare so good uh so the <laughs> Sachstand they presented the interior ministry presented the Sachstand Bericht zur Entwicklung eines modernen Schutzraumkonzepts do you want to know what that means yep so that is a report status report on the development of a modern shelter concept shelter oh wow yeah so what really what like so during the cold war going back a bit Germany, West Germany, and East Germany too, obviously had a lot of public bunkers like, for people. And since the 1990s, that, those have been kind of sold off or used for, you know... Art galleries, isn't there one? Yeah. Like you can go? Raising chickens, th different things. Yeah, there's one in Berlin, there's an art gallery now. Mm -hmm. It's privately owned, yeah. that one. So they've all been sold off. And now <laughs> they've realised that... Uh, <laughs> with the... <laughs> situation in Ukraine and the fears that there actually we wouldn't be able to protect that many people so uh, and because they were trying to save money as well because the you know the government's always trying to save money so they kind of sold them all off yeah and now there is a, a massive issue with uh, there just aren't enough of them like and the especially the Kommunen and uh, the local governments have all been saying we need more of them and we need to uh, build more shelters but then everyone and then the government was like saying well yeah but but we're never going to be able to, like, there's 80 million mm. people here. Yeah. We're never going to protect everyone. Yeah. everyone anyway. That's what I was just thinking. Like, what's the <laughs> fucking point? So they were just saying that, well, it's it would be a good thing if people started making their own plans. <laughs> Not in so many words, but that's sort of How what they about, said. lads? <laughs> How about we actually just start working on some of the fucking geopolitical shit? Rather than, oh, you, you're all all right to make your own bunkers. Cool, bye. <laughs> bye. No! <laughs> That's not the solution. Uh, so but I do think, like, we're never going to be able to bunker everybody. Like, that's nuts. Yeah. So if you're interested to learn more about this, you can go to the, <laughs> the website of the Federal Office of Civil Protection and Disaster Assistance. Oh, no. Which is the government agency which is supposed to protect the population. And they have a, a lot of interesting advice for what people can do in their own homes. Meanwhile... There is, if you if you were an, if you if I was an investor, if I was a stock market investor, though apparently there's a huge gap in the market in, in Germany for bunker companies. Because <laughs> uh. so uh, there aren't that many companies in Germany that provide bunkers and and uh, for private and they and they. And they I'd say to be honest. If there's one thing I would trust the Germans to do, it's build me a fucking bunker. <laughs> I have to say, I would, that made in Germany, I would, yeah, a hundred percent. So I was talking today to a company called Bunker Schutzraum Systeme Deutschland. Of course you were. And they have said they've they've been doing pretty good business in the last couple of years. Especially, actually, it started in Corona times, and now it's gone. It's gone up, and and they said they really noticed that in the first, especially in the first couple of years, that there weren't that companies that that, that many companies like them, and they supply Schutz concept, a protection concept for its systems for you know companies as well, and uh, local fire brigades and all these mm -hmm. other kinds of things, and local governments and and just normal people too. Anyway, so there's, a, there's a, like a growing interest in bunkers. How much but... did you talk... Like, how much would would it cost? <laughs> do, you want, do you want our bunker? I yeah. haven't... I haven't, uh, I haven't actually looked. So let's say you wanted a basic panic room. Mm-hmm. I'm on their website now. The cheapest one is 78000 Okay. You want that. Yeah, they can get that to you. It's got three but beds. But where are you putting it? Do you have to have a garden? Like, this is just also... Yeah, I mean, I guess you would probably have to put it in your garden. 
bury it in your garden. So yeah, it starts at about 78,000 for one of the bunkers. Goes up quite much, quite a lot as you would imagine. Oh, you can get, oh, look at this. You can get a pop-up version for as little as 19,000 euros. Oh, little, what little, do you mean pop-up? It looks like this. Look, it's a it's sort of a black box that you can just stick in your in a room and it will protect you. Oh, from what? That doesn't look that <laughs> good, to be honest. I mean, that is the the the, the Lidl option. That's what that would be in the center yeah, aisle. Yeah, in the of center Lidl. aisle of Lidl, a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little panic room, and it, you can just install it inside whatever room you have. And so, yeah, that's the that's the cheapest option. Yeah. Uh, plus 170 euros if you want a bench in there <laughs> as its bank. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so there's features you can add to it. Well, um, well they, but they all why come do with I, if I'm in my if I'm in my panic room bunker, then I can have any old bench. It shouldn't. I don't need a hundred euros bench. How much are benches? I don't know. We should have them. Do you want me to research bench prices? No, I don't. No. I don't. I don't. I don't. No, sorry. Sorry. Right. So that's that. We're all fucked. Hooray. Sorry. But you know what? Yeah. Just to give some perhaps much needed perspective. I don't mean, I think I mean perspective in the German way there. Like to give a, I don't know. Maybe I mean perspective. I don't know. I'm so tired. <laughs> we, we don't have to keep I'm talking. So... We can stop now. No. <laughs> We've had an. We've, uh, we've been when you mentioned the Cold War, like if you think back to what people like, let we're sitting here in Berlin and we're like, fucking hell, this is bad. <laughs> but it has been very bad before. Mm. But then loads of people did die, didn't they? So I don't know where I'm going in this. <laughs> I don't. I. I yeah. The, I do sometimes think it's my kind of like really middle class privilege thing. We're like, oh god, things are gonna get so bad. I'm like, they're fucking bad for loads of millions and millions and billions of people, and maybe we'll be okay. Well, let's hope so. I've said this before. We will still have laughs. <laughs> yeah. And like mega cans. That's what the dystopias well, don't do. Maybe not megas. You we'll might have, have to something. start. You might have to start. You know, hoarding mega cans. <sighs> Once again, if anyone has the Gordon's gin and tonic in a 330 mil, <laughs> I will reward you handsomely. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Yeah. Thank you, I think. Thank you for listening. Yes, and for this I'm delicious talking. mega can, remember. And for this lovely mega can. Ooh, that this was one's amazing. all bashed up. God. Oh. Whoa! Conrad! Hold it up to the light. Did you ever know that on the the yellow thing, which just looks like a boring old yellow strip, there's yeah. like little picture, like little things of lemons. That's I mean, so I nice. That is, that is nice, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not as. I thought it was as, just like a strip. I was overwhelmed by that before, but yeah, that is nice. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to have a picture of a lemon on the Lynchburg oh, lemonade. Oh God. Okay. Okay. Let's stop there with that on that bombshell. All right. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care. Megan's Mega Can. German News in English with a cocktail can. The German News, it's quite a test. With Megan's Mega, you're feeling It's actually uh, it's quite a positive message to I give to people. So. I like to think that we have a quite a positive impact on our listeners. I hope so. Because we try and get them to defy the fear of listening to the news all day. I mean, it's better than reading a German newspaper, surely. It's main, yeah, I would, I would definitely recommend listening to our podcast more than reading any German newspaper. German newspapers barely have pictures. Oh. Like, fucking, it's just, it's just... A brick of text. Oh, yes. It's yeah, awful. and they seem to make a virtue of it. They think it's, like, so great to have no Oh, text. not like you Americans no pictures. with your fucking... <laughs> Colour pictures. <laughs> decadent pictures in I your know. newspapers. Yeah, What's uh, that? A 
crossword puzzle. Oh, no you wonder to... you had Trump. Jesus Christ, everyone! Like, there's a middle one. You have to concentrate on the news. It's very important. Oh. You have to like. Oh, have, have a mega. Have a mega. Give us a picture every now and then. Just and a wee picture, maybe of, you know. <laughs> yeah. A diagram. Yeah. 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 Yeah.